What I want to do today is just kind of talk to you about um, some of the some of your background and and how that has kind of influenced your music and uh, talk to you a bit about your music as well. So uh, let's start. I know that your your dad's family were in England. As uh, I understand, they were gardeners, and then they came and they were no, that was market my, gardening. That was my mother's. That was your mother's people. People, yeah. Okay, and your dad was from Ontario as well. Right. And then he came west after the First World War. Uh, actually. Uh I think he came west on the harvest excursions. I think that was before the First World War. Okay. And he, he joined the army in Toronto, so... So he would have been back there then. Yeah. And then he came back here in about 1920, I understand, and bought land where you were raised. Yeah, 1919 or 1920, I don't remember okay. the exact year. And your mother had been married and had four kids and then her husband was killed by the flu epidemic. Right. Okay. So and then your mom and dad got together. Basically, your dad decided to help raise four kids and then he had two of his own. Well, yeah. He, he wanted a housekeeper, I guess, uh, on top of everything else. So that's yeah. how they came to get together. Cool. Okay. And that was on the land where you eventually farmed, right? Yep. You ended up on the home land. Right. Okay, so my memory of that farm is that you had both pasture land and grain, right? right? But you never owned any more than the quarter section. Nope. Now, why did you keep it that small? Uh, I don't know, I guess... Nobody had much money in those days to buy more land. Uh, I, I never really wanted more. Okay. I don't think I was really into farming, but it was just uh, the only thing I knew, so I stayed at it. So, um, when you were uh, on the farm with your dad, he would have had tractors by then, or did he own no. those only horses? Yeah, I farmed with four horses for seven years. Okay. Uh, my dad had no use for tractors. Or <laughs> he said, those things will put you on the road. <laughs> okay. It was, was a lot of, everybody was farming with horses in my early memory. Uh -huh. I think there was one person in the, in the area that had a tractor, then it soon spread that everybody got tractors. But. And you, you and your uh, closest brother, you uh, used to ride horses to go to school in Kaleida. Right. Did you ride the horse every day or was that just a winter type thing? No, we just rode the one horse. like. Yeah, together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I understand that your older brothers and sisters, like the four hunts, they went to school at a different school. Yeah. And was that Overdale? Some of them went up to Overdale, yeah. Okay, so how come you guys ended up going to Kaleida if Overdale was that close? Well, we had another farm that we uh, rented oh, about a mile south of where we lived, and it was closer. It was in the Overdale district, so that's okay. where when they lived there, they went to Overdale. And I think my brother might have went to Overdale for a, a year or so, I'm not sure. Okay. But then we moved up to the farm where I spent most of my life and that was in the Kaleida area so that's where we went. Okay, cool. So four horses you said was all he ever used? Yep. Okay. Well, we had six horses but we just used four and, and uh, all our transportation was by horse and buggy and uh -huh. so we kept one horse for the horse and buggy if we needed them or a spare horse. Okay. Well the other ones got sick or whatever. So the uh, the hub of the community would probably have been Kaleida then, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Tell me some of the first things you remember about Kaleida. Well, I remember the uh, the old store they used to have there with uh, 
there was no electricity. One of my earliest memories, it was a, at a Coleman hanging lamp, two mantles on it that I still remember uh, Bill Boot mm -hmm. lighting up this coal oil lamp when it got dark because it dark about 4.30 in the wintertime. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, there was also a hall there. Yes, hall and there and board walks. Uh, it was just plank walks. Okay. If there was any. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, tell me some of the things you remember about Kaleida Hall. What were some of the performances you first saw there? Christmas concerts. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I used to think that Kaleida Hall was such a huge place. Uh huh. And now it's very small. Who do you remember performing there? Uh, they used to put plays on. And Bill Boot and Morna, his wife, they both performed. Uh, let's think. I can't remember just who else might have. Lynn Mitchell, I guess, played the fiddle. I think he lived a few miles up the road, but. Mm -hmm. That's mainly who I remember. But. Okay. So when you first performed, that would have been, you said that, I think you told me that was in Darlingford, right? Right. And you told me that, uh, well, you tell me about that first performance. That was in about 1949 or 50, right? Uh, 49, I think. I just had the guitar a year. And I think it was uh, a talent show. And I was always a little shy in those days, so I didn't want to sing. I, I used to play a mouth organ with an apparatus around my neck, so I yeah. could play the mouth organ and the guitar together, and that's what I did. Okay. That way I didn't have to look up, I just looked up the mouth organ. Do you remember what song it was? Not really. I think the little brown jug was fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> Nothing too complicated. Okay, so was this a regular kind of a of a talent show in Darlingford, or what was it? Well, they had amateur contests and talent shows in the fall, various places, Somerset, Pilot Mound, Darlingford, Mound, who had one, every, every little town. Okay, and these were just ordinary people who yeah. could entertain? Yeah, usually it was three, uh, 15 Okay, so cool. You didn't go to Florida if you won, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, wh what made you decide to pick up the guitar? I heard Wilf Carter when I was three or four years old. That'd be 1932, 1933. Yeah, on an old battery-operated radio that we happened to have. And I thought that radio was the most unique thing, uh, just a magic box. You could yeah. hear people from all over the world. And one night it happened to be twisting the dials and heard this guy singing and yodeling. And I thought, geez, was that ever good? If I could only do that. Turned out what they said it was Montana Slim broadcasting from New York City on the CBS network. Okay. Of course, that was Wilf Carter. Right. So that got me hooked, and I never, uh, that was the kind of music I loved then and ever since. Cool. Well, uh, where'd you get your guitar, that first one? T mail order. I mail wondered. Order. So what did it look like? It was a Lone Ranger guitar. I had a picture of the Lone Ranger and Tonto on the front of it. Uh-huh. $9.95. Yeah. <laughs> I still remember the price. Oh, How'd you pay for it? Oh, I'd saved up a, a lot of money, and I, we, you used to get a job stooking in the fall or thrashing. They five dollars a day you could get for stooking, and uh -huh. six dollars for thrashing, driving, uh -huh. driving a stoop team. I got enough money scraped up somehow. Of course, with all I said, nine dollars and ninety-five cents wasn't right. Fashion. So, how did how did you learn to play? Like, yeah, I think you've told me that you never really did learn to, to read music that much. You're doing a lot of this just uh, like by ear. Strictly by ear. I still can't read a note of music. So who taught you the chords though? Uh, Self-instruction books. Okay. Would tell you where to place your fingers and I think there was a book. Well, we can get into that a little later. No, that's okay. And all the chords showed you where to place your fingers and 
Okay. And the first time when I first got the guitar, I had never had an instrument of any kind in my hands in my life. I hated music when I went to school. <laughs> I couldn't stand that music. At one exam, I got 13%. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> That's what kept me from trying to get a guitar earlier. I figured, well, you have to be able to read music to play a guitar. But all I ever learned was courting. Okay. All right, so uh, the first recording you ever did was with Billy Veal, right? In yeah. Darlingford? Right. Okay, tell me what you remember about that system that he used. Well, my brother Reg went with me uh, one night in the middle of winter. And uh, he just had one microphone plugged in. Mm -hmm. and my brother held it up to me while I sang. Okay. <laughs> That's basically all I remember. We did two or three songs. And it was kind of a wax on a... Yeah. A, a wax coating on it? You, you cut directly on the record. That it's like you couldn't make a copy and then dub it. There was no dubbing in No. So what you, whatever you did was, was the recording. Okay. Only thing else you could do is throw it away, and that was cost, I don't know what, two or three dollars for each blank. Okay. All right. So uh, that was like you, I think, did that a couple of times, right? Yeah. I think you showed me to two of those that come from about what, 1950? Yeah, 49, 50, and 51, I think we did. Okay. All right, and then uh, by that time you were performing at a number of different places. What are some of the first places outside of Darlingford and Collida? I remember one year that uh, I'd just written a song called Manitoba uh, Blues, and I sang that at Pilot Mound. I got first place. I sang it at Somerset. I got first place, and I think it was either Darlingford or Manitoba, I got second. Mm -hmm. Manitoba Blues? Yeah. Okay, was this before you met Marge or after you met her? This was before. That was before, okay. Yeah. And so uh, this is the, these fall uh, gatherings that you were talking about before, the talent shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, we met, uh, we performed at some after I met her too. Yeah. I didn't meet her until late in 52. Okay. All right, so that, that's some of the first ones. All right. Um, obviously, you were writing songs by then. I wrote my first song in 1948. Okay, what one, what's that one? Do you remember? Memories of My Old Prairie Home. Memories of My Old Prairie Home. It was, I wrote it as if I was about 83 years old, which I am now looking <laughs> Do you remember it right now? Could you play it? I could try. Why don't you play that one? I'm going to back up just a little bit to give you a chance to play. Okay. I won't guarantee because I, it's a lot of years since uh, I wrote That's okay. We'll see. Today. Did your mom and dad plant them? No. 
No? Wild, wild maples. These are wild maples. Yeah. So there's a woodlot on the land. Well, this was just be uh, around the back of the house. Okay. One just about done my career in. <laughs> and Why? <laughs> well, the uh, maple trees would uh, branch out and the branches would get farther up on the house and they were rubbing on the shingles. So right. I thought, well, I'm going to get up on this low branch and I'll saw the next one off that's doing all the rubbing. So I stood on the branch and all of a sudden, without any warning or a thing, just, it just broke loose from the base of the tree. Not, <sighs> not the one I was sawing, the one I was stood on. <laughs> oh my. And there was a hump of dirt underneath me and I landed right on my back on that hump of dirt. I couldn't talk. I was trying to... Marge was washing clothes, hanging them out in the clothesline, I remember that day. And I thought I was yelling, but I couldn't get any sound out. Wow. I crawled my hands and knees around the, where she was. And we got in the car and we went down to uh, Morden and saw the chiropractor. Mm -hmm. and he never done any good. I, I went back to him two or three times. and It was the remainder of that summer. What year was this? Oh... Probably back in the 1960s, maybe, or 70s. So you had a whole bunch of kids at home to take care of, too. Yeah, well, yes, and it, it never got better. I remember playing baseball at the time, and I wouldn't sit on the bench because if I sat down, I couldn't get up without somebody to help me. Oh, my wow. My back was just that bad. So much for the maple trees. Yeah, so I, uh, but finally, uh, oh, I went... That fall, we went on a trip with Tex and Mary Schutz, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah, down, I remember them. Down to Texas. So this had to be in the 80s, I guess. Yeah. And that's where I won a yodeling contest in Kerrville, Texas. 